It's like, am I allowing this? Am I going to have this happen? Oh. We're going into map one, though, boys. It is time for us to watch this go down. It is Cloud9 taking on Gambit. We are on Vertigo, and it is picked by Gambit with Cloud9 starting off on the CT side. And already, we're starting to see a big push in, a fast push coming in from Gambit. Yeah, and the pace in this matchup is going to be very interesting to follow. Do they want to play fast or do they want to play slow games? That's what it's going to be all about. Already those grenades coming in, though. Nafani takes a lot of damage. Less than ideal for him. They're still going to work their way in. Cloud9 keeping it very defensive. Bomb's going to get planted, but a bit of utility damage is coming back as well as the Glock shots coming through. Alex has gone down, and well, Gambit got themselves in a nice position, but it's all about holding on from here. Still a bit of utility to be played out here for Cloud9 as they're biding their time. There's a small for Cloud9. That's on S attack, a kit on Floppy. So it is possible, it is doable. It's about finding these kills early on. She was going to wait for that flash. That ball. And here it comes, Cloud9. Good trade. Inters with two. Three on one fast S attack alone now. That smoke doesn't count anymore, man. You got it all to do. And it's not going to be enough. One zero Gambit. Gambit. My first piece like Hasley. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Maydak is loving life right now. We're hitting the whole Twitch. Chat, community, everyone else with a wild curveball here. There we go. We thought we were going to throw to someone. Hey, <laughs> joke on us. you, we throw it at us. It's us. We're rocking it all alone, all along. The whole way, it's us. We've got the gang. And for now, for, honestly, from Gambit just then, that was a solid round. That was a very solid round. And you could see they were very determined in the way they want to play it. They wanted to go fast towards A. They wanted to keep up a quick pace. And they hit Cloud9 at the exact moment where they weren't in control. They weren't in balance, so to speak. This one, though, it's so, so important for Gambit not to throw away this one. There's a Molotov being thrown from Nafni. And there could be two players being pushed out to his fate right here. Ooh. Let's see. <gasps> Ooh, yes, oh, yes. That's, no. that's two. That's so, so easy. And that is so, so important as well. Fight back for Messi, doesn't get anything away with it, and now Floppy, two versus five, yeah. Looking rough, isn't it? Alex able to get away with a couple of kills, though he'll chip at them. He's grabbed himself the Galil, but it's an easy finish off. Gambit go up 2-0 already. Minimal casualties, only two went down thanks to Alex, but it was a good setup there from Cloud9. That could have potentially worked had Gambit gone a bit slower. Yeah, which is why Gambit actually got away with a very, very good job cleaning up that A side. There was the gamble coming on from Cloud9, but good protocols. We saw these Molotovs being used very efficiently, and then Gambit just hiding behind the smoke. So it's very, very great, because I can, as you can see right now on your screen, it is a dry, a dry eco round for Cloud9. So for Gambit, it's about making money, putting money in the bank, making sure that there is no reset coming onto the horizon is just gonna basically go through the motions of, you know, information grabbing, looking what's happening. We see Nafani with the uh, P250 trying to grab some of it, but so far, no one is in his crosshair. And I like this though from Nafani, right? He saw what happened last time. He's checking for it. He doesn't want to allow any players to be hiding around. Cloud9 already starting to get their movement on. Is there where, where Gambit will be hitting for now? Yeah, it's one of those rounds where there's nothing really to win for Cloud9, right? You could get one, two kills, maybe able to save an AK-47. That's a success in itself, but it's to be expected here that Gambit will just clean it up one by one, step by step, to take map control, and they will push Cloud9 out of the bomb side. And James, it's, it's one of those rounds where we can allow ourselves to talk a little bit about the game, what we expect, and so forth. Because this round right here, I doubt Cloud9 is going to get anything. Yeah, it's not much that's going to go in their favor. When it comes to like, looking at Vertigo, I remember looking back at that first Cloud9 game we saw in it. it took Floppy massive heroic oh, no. even to be able to take it right. So we don't actually know how really good Cloud9 can be on it. No, but the, the thing the is, rounds were good. Yeah, it, it worked, but the thing with Cloud9 is, right, if we remember the game against Mouseports, they got off to a very good start on both the maps, Inferno and Overpass. They were leading 8-1, to 6-1 to on Overpass, I believe. Oh, sorry, Vertigo. And, and, and were doing a, a fantastic job, and then they slowed down a little bit, then they couldn't make it happen. So, if Gambit is getting off to a good start, where does that leave Cloud9, who struggles so, so much in the later game mm -hmm. against Mouseports? Well, like weapon save, that's really good. Three weapons, yeah. save, a lot of money in the bank for Gambit. So, in that sense, that's a successful round. Now it's the big round for them, though, right? Can Gambit keep this momentum going on their T sides? Going to get a big stacked up buyer from Cloud9. Woxic on the AWP, as always. But Shiro versus Woxic, that's something that's super interesting. Cloud9 putting a lot of pressure on Woxic, who is alone right now middle. Alex will take some map control towards a round. They will play behind that smoke a lot. And there, I talked about it, the pressure onto Woxic. He's got to get away because that kid would mean a lot for Gambit. Alex is going to be punished. Actually, f is being punished behind that smoke. Oh. And that's the second kill from Nafani. Oh. Two drop and kill. Three men down for Cloud9 in a matter of five seconds. He got his 
gates on. Opened up with the first kill. He's looking for more as well as Woxic falls. And this is Nafani coming in and absolutely wrecking them. One by one, they fall. Errors were made. And Cloud9, they get a buy round and achieve absolutely nothing. Yeah, that is the worst possible start for Cloud9 right here. Fantastic round by Nafani. Getting two nice, nice opening kills and then just continuing with the pressure. One by one by one, they go down. And this is not the player we expect to be the big guy on the server. This is not the guy we expect to go up with the eight tracks after three rounds or four rounds or whatever. He's a, a supportive element there mm. for this lineup. It's Shiro, it's Exile. So if this is your weak link within the lineup, doing this well against Cloud9 is fast. Well, you're in a big, 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 big trouble, Cloud9. If you remember, right, go on to when Blade was still the coach of Gambit. And he sat there and put Exile onto the squad, onto the main squad to Ooh. try and fill him, right, and give him an opportunity. He didn't hit the mark. He wasn't ready for it. Now he's come back, back up to life within this Gambit Youngsters, but I can see multiple players on here with great careers going forward. And the difference is that they were upgraded together as a team, yeah. promoted to, you know, the top league. So they have that, again, they have that core together. They know they're confident. They know how to play with each other. And then, to me, that's a huge difference between, you know, being just pulled into the, uh, the big boys table, so to say. So far, Gambit have been doing a stellar, stellar job at cleaning that A ramp. Mm. We see Cloud9 trying to make the difference, trying to be aggressive, never finding any success. Messi's going to try and play around there, but he's not going to be able to hide. The spam comes through. Nintas puts him down. Walks it on the flank, but he's ready for it. Gambit are just one step ahead right now. And yes, they've got the upgraded weaponry. Yes, they're in a good spot for this no matter what. But keeping all these players alive, building this huge bank, this is incredible. James, we're five rounds into this game and Cloud9 currently done five kills combined. This is the perfect start for Gambit. They're all over the place, winning all the duels. And sure, it's still early stages in the game. But as I said before, Cloud9, they come off to a good start against Mouse Sports on both maps. Now, they're off to a bad start. So I don't know about you, Matthew, but this is a little bit scary for Cloud9. They need to change the approach. I think Gambit have called the gamble when it comes to the A ramp. Now, we see change of pace coming out of Gambit, this time around focusing a lot towards the middle. There's only just one player covering the extremities, making a little bit of noise though, keeping Cloud9 guessing as to what is happening. We see on the minimap, Alex just left mid, so that might be an opening. Esta is gonna fancy his chances through the smoke, but I don't feel that comfortable about shooting it through smoke. Can't yeah. go horribly wrong. <laughs> Could end up with a few bullets coming back in his face. He definitely wants to be careful of that. With Gambit, like you said, they've taken this mid control. They're still looking to hold on to it for now. Boots, oh, this could be huge. If Hobbit gets the timing on it, Alex spots him out. Spam, oh! Oh, oh, oh! Alex is going to be sore from that one in the morning. Not what he expected at all. Hobbit got away with murder. 14 health, but still the numbers in their favor. As attacks come on over, he wants to try and potentially find an even trade up in here. He's got Floppy alongside him as well. Hobbit's still hanging about, but he's just backed away in time. Oh, the timing on this is going to be very interesting. Hobbin's just holding. Cloud9, they'll have to be proactive, and that is what s -Attack is doing right now. Going in for the oh. duel and gets taken out by Hobbit again. They're losing every single duel right now. Messi with a lot to do right here, also losing the duel. This looks way, way too easy for Gambit. Two versus five now. Robbie trying to stand. Gets a kill. Needs another one. and gets the second one as well. Stays alive with 7 HP here. There's a... A little bit of a chance for Cloud9 to fight back in this one, but it's up to Voxic and Floppy. He's already done so, so much. Tell me if I'm wrong, but like, S is pushing there. He had Floppy alongside him for the longest time. Then Floppy went back and he still continues to push on it. They should have at least been able to begin the trade position if S Tag went down, had they kept that together. Surely, surely. And, and now you see the downfall of it. Voxic goes down and there we go. Hobbit gets the kill as well. I don't know, but I like the approach from Gambit right here. They're well aware what's coming at him, right? Every single time Cloud9 has tried something proactive or something aggressive, mm. they've been shut down every single time. Yeah, the, the issue for Cloud9 right now is that all these 50-50 duels go in Gambit's way. I would, I would even yeah. go as far as say that that first duel between Alex and Gambit is a 60-40 is a for Alex, <laughs> and somehow he misses the mark, which then gives the first kill to Gambit, and then you can see them, how they play that power play. They wait patiently, Hobbit uh, kind of turtling down middle and then punishing s attack, make it a five versus three, and even though Floppy tries his best, just not enough. They basically were relying, right, that Gambit would then try and make a move off the back of it, but Gambit already knew, oh, Cloud9, you're probably going to try and, and, and fight back at us. You're going to fire back, and, and they just sat back and waited for it patiently. Now another round that should be going the way of Gambit relatively easily. 6-0, about to be 7-0, unless something happens for Cloud9. There's a couple of deagles. Of course, they can't be hard-hitting, but... I've seen nothing so far that suggests to me that Gambit is not well aware of how to approach these anti-eco rounds. 
They stay together. They use their utility well, and they play somewhat slow. Don't take any chances. Don't take any risk. Hobbit maybe a little bit up here alone by himself. Has the backup. Has the Molotov. Probably can't really connect. Or what? Gets one kill right here, but is that enough? Exile and Shiro combines for two kills. And once again, oh, it's a two versus four. Make that a one versus four. And Alex gets nothing out of this one as well. Never know. At what point? At what point is this too much? Look at the money. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just stacked. It's They're like, let's just run it around over and over. You can just throw weapons up in the air if you want at this point. Gambit are living the dream. This is where we ask of Alex to come up with a solution because sure. practically speaking, Gambit have been one step away ahead. They've been punishing DA aggression coming out of Cloud9. Then we could see Middle finding a kill. Gambit have been also very good at hiding what it is they're doing, keeping Cloud9 in the dark. So for the British IGL here, it's going to be quite tough this time around. We see Gambit with a different approach as well. Fast towards A. The retake comes in, but the kill don't go through. Floppy with a second one. That is pretty good for him. He's been the hero for Cloud9 in so many games. He needs to be the hero now as well. He's done the damage to give him the numbers advantage. And well, we haven't been able to say that across many of these rounds. It's always been in Gambit's favor. Now you look, they went defensive, defensive, they've fallen back, and now they want to try and push back up on it again. They want to see if Cloud9 decide to move around. But Alex is still patiently waiting, despite being tagged up just a little bit. Yeah, but there's three Molotovs available, and one of them will probably come in and stand back. It will right now, and now it's up to Alex to get something out of this round. Gets one, Ooh. gets two. Fantastically done by Alex. Force back. One versus four for sure. That's going to be a tough one, no matter what. Oh, he knows. We know what he's capable of, though. He definitely is capable of a lot of stuff here, but 1v4 in this situation. They've got the money. It's not a problem if he does lose it. But do Gambit just play the smart game? Do they now try and take as many pieces away from Cloud9 and make this round expensive for him? That's what's going to be key here. He can take his sweet time. He doesn't have to rush at all. He has 35 seconds to play with. Sure, winning the round might be in jeopardy, but what if he can take one gun away? What if he can take two mm. and then make sure that Clown actually do not build any bank? He's got a smoke to play with. And now with Molotov being picked up, he will switch over to the M4, that transition power, a bit more, I want to say, doable than with the AWP. Yeah. But again, the name of the game is economical damage. Well, they are waiting for him. Alex is putting his head down. Shiro's got no idea just yet. He's picked up extra utility to try and work with it. He wants to get the plant down, but it's not going to work out. Alex holds on, and he holds on strong, but it was only Alex and Floppy to make sure they locked down that ramp in that round. Yeah, and I liked it, right? Because Matthew said, what are they going to do? What is Alex telling the team right now? What is the solution? And they bought a double AWP setup into the round. The only problem with that one was that they never got any action to see for themselves. It was down to Floppy, down to Alex, winning the initial duel for the first time in this game. And I guess the AWPs were just a safety net behind them because they are playing a double up setup now, Messi and Voxic. And that's not something we normally see for Cloud9. Also, how aware are Gambit of that double AWP setup right now? Because they've played only the A side, they've tried to fight a lot, so they might be punished later on. I'm talking about punished here. Woxie doesn't even have a chance to shoot. He's out. Nafani has been so crucial in these openings. And that was because Woxic was double zoomed in. The smoke was there and he managed to push through. He was first scouting it with just a single zoom, misses out on the push up. And again, they're losing a heavy hitter. Woxic 0 8. My oh my. He's supposed to be the star of Cloud9. He's supposed to be the guy leading the charge. Not dying, as he's been doing so far. Looks rough for Cloud9. Still got a decent amount of utility to play with. They're holding on to it as well. Here, once again, Flop will have to come into Chris. He gets one, but he needs more. He needs more teams. He really does. Alex and Essetag, they are here. They've called in for the backup. But Gambit, they've still got plenty of time to work with here. All the utilities being spent out by Cloud9. Axel goes in for the track, the, the kill, but he can't get it done. The spam's coming up. Shiro, he's dancing with him, he's toying with him, but he still gets it with the pistol. It's still in favor of Gambit, but Alex, he's on the side. He goes out for the spray down, but the refrags, the communication, it's all there for Gambit now. And Mezzi, we spoke about the double orb setup being in play. He's tagged up into us quite nicely. Oh, and he gets it. Now it's just Hobbit. It's a 1v1. This is doable. Messi looking to clutch this out. And it's around the Cloud9 desperately need their money. It's in the dumpster. And it continues to be so. It's not working out for them. They got one on the board and straight away smacked back down. The trade game for Gambit right now is impeccable. It is perfect. The spacing they have between the waves of attack, there's always, always a buddy behind him ready to refrag, yeah. ready to trade, ready to revenge, and use that information to the best possible. So good job by Gambit. I thought s had done enough with that kill, but unfortunately missing the mark against Shiro, that was the key mm -hmm. kill of the round. 
Also, worth noticing, you could see the adaptation coming out of Gambit. They've been pushed one round towards the A side, so what do they do? They take it easy, they take a step back. Yeah. They wait a little bit, they see if they can punish, and punish they do. Nafani scalps Wuxik from the get-go, and as we said, he's been having a rough game, 0-0-8, but he can't ooh, wake up. Ooh, ooh, look at this stat! Yeah, I was just about to say, that is a very <laughs> important stat line to be aware of in this game. 85.1% of the rounds where they get the first kill, they also end up winning. Cloud9 simply cannot afford to lose the opening duels. Yeah. Simple as it is right now. They've been losing a lot of them, especially to Nefni, who's been absolutely stunning walking up the A ramp and opening up the rounds. On Vertigo, his rating the past three months is 1.13. Mm -hmm. The rating overall on all the other maps the last three months is 1.02. So he's a performer when it comes to Vertigo. He's a guy that likes to play this map. And you can see that basically reflected in the scoreline as of right now. By far the best player and most impactful player on the server thus far in the matchup. I'm honestly real worried for Cloud9 right now. We talk about CT side. Mm. What do we say about this? What, 60-40 on Vertigo in general and how it works towards CT side? That'd be a fair assessment. I'm just thinking about the protocols and the method that Cloud9 usually uses to get these CT rounds. And, and usually you see Alex being very proactive, very aggressive. You have yeah. Raj in mind who's pushing the B house. Can he find that same method on Vertigo? It's a map that is a little bit harder to push from behind. Middle, we could see some incursion. Down B as well, you can be a little bit more proactive. So maybe that's what needs to be done for Cloud9. Being a aggressive, but not hands-on, full-on, just half, just going for information. 8-1 to one is the scoreline right now, and I'm almost willing to say that Cloud9, they cannot afford to lose more than one round in this Agree. half. Agree. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough uphill battle in the second half. Alex wants to go aggressive, gets a flash now, I guess. Walks through the smoke, can he get anything with? Good flash right here, gets one, gets traded instantly again, as you talked about. Match with the trade fracking right now from Gambit. It's fantastic. So is the entry duels. This time they lost it, but instantly the trade comes in. And the swap over comes in as well. It was Shiro on the AWP. He was trying to get boosted and see above it, see if he can get the initial pick off. With Hobbit being tagged up, put down a little bit lower. He throws on the AWP over to him. They're playing smart. They're keeping the teamwork going. This is the key to success for Gambit right now. And definitely on the team synergy, they're a step ahead of Cloud9. A new challenge for them. We have seen what they can do with the power play. They have converted these 5v4s with ease, but now four versus four. They don't have the mana that you could argue it's T silent, you know. Yeah. Ooh, but the key yeah. here is gonna change everything. Floppy being punished. Was taking it a little bit of risk. Is that the go though? It's just S attack with that UMP. Not the best weapon you want to have in a 1v4? No, certainly not, Maniac. S attack here though, he needs to come up huge. This is where he needs to be the difference maker in a fight like this. Hobbit's a little bit low, but he'll be more towards the back lines. Shiro has been tagged up a tad, but he's not completely softened up. Essentag getting the first. He needs to come in with a second, but again, it's Gambit. They're always good to bounce back. Helps a little bit low compared to the two Cloud9 players. Woxic still needs to get on the board, needs to do some huge impact with that AWP in hand. Messi was nearly the hero in the previous round. The time is ticking away, but Gambit don't care. They'll go in for the plant. Wox is trying to get the spam. Oh, nearly making it work, but it's not going to quite connect. And now, Cloud9 need to find a way in. All they've got to play with is a smoke of their own. Potential to smoke the bomb down once they get into it. But look at the positions from Gambit. But they're well aware they're completely surrounding it all. Oh, he just spotted Messi as well. He's got to be careful. Comes on to Woxic, but he gets the fast flick. He's managing to make it happen. And now this is certainly doable, but instantly... As Messi tries to work his way around the side, his teammate's fallen. He's going to go in for the backstab. He's going to try and make it happen. And he gets it done. Messi coming up huge. Side swipes him. Does he got it, though? He, he doesn't. doesn't. He doesn't deserve oh, it. I wanted no. to save I didn't want to ruin the moment. <laughs> I didn't want to be that guy, the killjoy, the downer. But he doesn't have a kid, so it's just going to be a save. He's going to stay alive. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah. So, Constellation here, he's going to bring the AWP into the next round. It's good to see as well, Wuxik hitting that fast flick. Quite important to yeah. sort of individual confidence. He's been <laughs> struggling right now, so might as well hit one. And Messi here with the clever play. A kit was all that separated them from mm. a win. I was just about to say, because the play he made right there, had yeah. he had a kit, that was absolutely fantastic. Waiting, taking his time, and, and being, you know, very, very calm on the trigger finger. But unfortunately, as you said, Matthew, no kid in play, and by then he couldn't win the round. Once again, Gambit's trading is what's winning them the round right now. Just try to imagine this thought process at home now that we have an eco boxing of course on an AVP. That's about it. Oh, Another opening, double gosh. opening from Gambit, right? So round is more or less over. If you remove the names on your screen right here and you just look at the way the players are playing on the server, you wouldn't think that Gambit are Gambit right now. They play like a much, much better team. Messi fighting back. 
Maybe that's enough. We'll see Exile walking in, getting the kill. There's always a trade threat potential when it comes to Gambit. I've been thoroughly impressed with the way of playing Counter-Strike so far. Oh, Woxie needs to be careful here. He's pushing on in and he instantly gets domed. Gambit, they are just so well aware of all the protocols of all what can be happening here. He saw the AWP disappear like an <laughs> abracadabra, just gone. So he knows Boom. where he is. And for Estetic, the long, long mission is going to be to save that AWP. But I just wanted to point out, we, we talked about that pick coming out of Gambit. And yeah. the least we can say is that they are organized in the first 15 to 20 seconds. Everything is polished. Yeah. They know exactly where they're peaking, when they're peaking. There's always a buddy behind. The pop flash is good. Nafini has been, sure, stellar in open kills. I'm not going to take anything away from him. But the system around him is very well polished. And this is the... Yeah, sorry, I just want to know what he ate for, for dinner tonight, because it, it's, <laughs> it's been starting, right? It's not a player that we normally, we don't see him that much on the top level, mm. but when we do see him, we don't see him perform at this level. So to me, this is a first-hand experience with how good he can be when he's on hitting it. So when Gambit win, Pimp, yeah, I'll ask him what he had for dinner, and then we'll get that you before your stream game, so you can dominate ah, like this, yeah? I'm usually better than that, so. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. All right, why, why did Cloud9 not pick you up, then? They not put a big price tag on your name? Too expensive, homie. Too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Pimp is worth too much. These Gambit players, though, they're showing more than they're worth in this game. And I completely agree with you guys. This is teamwork, right? Yeah, okay, you see Naphne and, and Hobbit, they're, they're up there. They're fragging out. Oh, beautiful. That's what you need to see finally from Cloud9. They tried to go aggressive on ramp multiple times. Big miss coming in from Shiro, and that's not going to be acceptable. He's expecting another push to come on through. Goes in for the tank through the wall, but it's not going to work out as Axile. He's moved on over. He's trying to find another way, and he believes he can get it done. The flash comes out, but he's still working his way around the boxes here. They've pushed in. They've been given so much space. And Incentry Grenade goes down on their feet. But look, they're in the site. Floppy and Messi got to push their way back in. They've got to be oh so careful here. They can just let the bomb be planted. It's not a problem for, uh, you know, Cloud9. They have the 5v3. They have two smokes. Three smokes, actually. Two Molotovs this time around. They could organize. Starts well with Esther grabbing Shiro. Axel is good on the trade, but Axel... Uh, Axel! Alex would be the one besting him, and Inters will not be able to win that 1v4. Why did I say Axel? Sounds sounds good as well. Axel. Axel, Alex. I feel so, like we know someone yeah, called Axel. We, we've got Axel, <laughs> we've got happening. Alex, and we've got an Axel. We're, we're really going to have fun today. <laughs> Look, I just want to point out, what happened here for Cloud9. Instead of being a, a first, second aggression coming out of the a ram they mm -hmm. waited for the right timing this time around. We saw s yeah. waiting for the moment to pounce right here. Going at the end of that Molotov, grabbing these two kills, that was the difference maker. Yeah, but I also want to spin that one around because Gambit in a three versus five, they actually gave themselves a chance to win the round. Yeah. Initially, you know, thinking to yourself, okay, three versus five, you're on the T side. They were proactive again, going up towards the B bomb side, got the bomb plan, and there was a couple of duels that could have gone their way, that could have put the round into jeopardy. But this time around, Cloud9, they won the duels. Once again, s -Attack. he's been stepping it up the last couple of rounds. They need him. Alex going down this time around, though. Instant trade frag. No, instant. And this is great, right? Gambit know that, okay, we can keep pushing ramp. They're going to commit a lot to it early on. Then we can just boulder up into the other site and try and make this work for us. Messi being flashed out of existence. The smoke going down on top of him as well. Should allow for the plant to go down, though, as Wattix also fallen. Axar didn't just bust into the site, but he's busting heads elsewhere. And Gambit now in a 4v2. S-Attack and Floppy, the only ones left alive. And they're falling back. They need to, because what? They'll be reset again. It's over. It's over for Cloud9 chances in this round. And once more, we see how disciplined Gambit can be and how disciplined they are once they have the advantage, once they have the power play. Uh, a key moment for me on that B side is when the smokes are laying down and instead of being over eager in peeking, they just wait it out and then they calmly walk through. Now, Shiro, his mission oh. is quite clear. Take weapons away and so goes Floppy. That's an AK on the ground. Esetag, we said it. He's been the man to fight back on the mm -hmm. A side. Will he be able mm -hmm. to keep that M4? Could be a huge difference maker if you consider the money. I think he might be good. I'm not really good with these timings quite yet. That's okay. <laughs> I need to learn how many seconds are left when the game is over. It's a learning curve. It is a learning curve, right? It. We're, we're enjoying I'm it. I'm loving it. It's beautiful to hear your voice just more than just when we're on the desk. Mate. I feel like I'm talking too much. No, I'm not used no. to that much. Twitch chat, tweet at Maniac and tell him to talk more eventually. <laughs> We want all that Cast knowledge to come talking. out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shut up more, right, so people don't get sick of me. And you can talk more, man. It's all about room. It's all about space. And, well, space is something Cloud9 don't have in their heads, maybe, at this point. Because there's lots of holes in there made by Gambit. 
Look at the stack coming in for Cloud9. They have four players trying to defend that A round, that A side. It's been a point of contention. And now the retake is on. They've been trying to use that method for a while. But Nafani, do they know? Do they know about oh. Nafani? I think he might have just been able to squeeze in. They don't seem to oh, be aware. No. That's going to be an easy kill for Nafani. He gets floppy and with that, maybe the side just putting down the steps. Esetag is also... That's oh. Lurk on, lurk on, lurk. No one knew Esetag was actually in speed walk. Hobby will be there for the trade. Alex in the middle of the side. That is hella confusing. He might not get checked, though. This is a question. Alex could do some serious damage from here because they feel like they've got control. Sandbags has not been checked. He's in a good spot for it, but his teammates are falling still. This is still a 4v2, and Cloud9's Alex needs to do a huge amount of work. Pops off one and gets the second. He's looking for the next. Inters is on the side, on the ramp. Alex checked it, but did not check close. Inters still looking up high. Oh. Alex is doing it all. He's managing to make it work. Three swift kills from a genius position, but Gambit made the error. They did not check this. That 1v2, now 1v1. The information game being won by Clan right now because Alex, as we can see, had time to reposition. So it becomes a mental battle. Can you guess where your opponent is? That angle is really, really hard to hard check. Yeah. Axel versus Alex. 36 versus 16. Could be the difference between 11-4 and 13-2. And Alex will make it the hero of that round, finding that opportunity, going towards Sandbag. So well played by the IGL. That was the play. That was something that Cloud9 needed. But it was so lucky. They allowed, again, all this room for Gambit right. just to walk on in. They're basically chilling, saying we got a free site. If it wasn't for Alex, if he couldn't even get one kill, right, there would have been a huge problem. Then he comes in and cleans up everyone. Calculated smart play coming in, but still only three rounds on your CT side. This is awful for Cloud9. Yeah, I was just about to say, he's just about keeping them alive, right? Because it's, it's already looking a pretty dreadful for Cloud9, to be completely honest with you. They need more rounds. They need this fourth one as well if they want to stay alive in this game. A pissed round on the T side. And all of a sudden, we have a game again. But as of right now, there's no doubt Gambit has been the better playing team. s -Tech aggressive again this time around. They're waiting for him. They're punishing him. And once again, finding the first kill. Nathni, he's been all over this A bomb side. Time and time again, he finds the kill. Alex, three versus five. You have to be proactive. You have to do something. But Nathni, he's waiting you. They know. They know he's waiting for it. Ooh. Alex still able to get the upper hand in that duel, making it a doable, winnable round for Clown9 now in that three versus four. He's grabbing a lot of information, but Shiro is waiting to punish. <laughs> I thought he was in position Timing. with the sniper. Oh. Alex, he still wants to try and go for it a little bit here. Gambit are just going to group on back up. Hobbit doing a nice bit of damage to Woxic. The nade's coming out as well. Woxic needs to be careful. He's been chipped down. Messi's there on the side. He's trying to make it work. He's spraying away. Gambit needs to be careful, but Inters. Big headshot comes through. Woxic, he's already been softened up. Alex is doing everything once again. But is it going to be enough? Two kills in this round. Two players left to find. Woxic on the timing. They're not checking for him. And oh, Shiro was waiting. The timing. Now it's Woxic to clutch. It needs to come up huge. He goes up into oh, it, but it's not going to work out. Gambit get their first half. T-side Vertigo on their map pick 12-3. And now we will be going to a break to see if Cloud9 can bust their way back into this.
selling you for nothing. I'm gonna take what's mine. I'm gonna take what's mine. Ladies and gentlemen, and that is not an error you see on your screen. Do not adjust your sets. This is the real deal. This is Gambit up 12-3 against Cloud9 on Vertigo. Cloud9 now have an incredibly tough T side to deal with. And Gambit, well, they seem to have all the answers, but will it stack up on their CT side? We're about to find out. Hi, hi, important side. piston. Round. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just <laughs> the suspense is right here, right? Probably the most important piston around Cloud9 have played so far in this time together, pushing in towards the A bomb side. Fast pace, just like we saw Gambit do it in the first half, getting the bomb down. No, nope. fake planning it, waiting for the grenades, mm. but no nades are coming in. They're not aware Gambit haven't purchased them. Roxy gets the bomb planted, and here we are. Five versus five retake. That's what Vertigo offer you sometime. That retake's gonna be hard with both Hobbit and the Fanny. Softened up just a little bit. The Glock from Alex doing some damage at the long range. He's patiently trying to make some kills happen. Finally gets one on the board. Shiro's popped his way in and he's popping heads, but he needs to do a lot more than that. Shiro and Axel in a 2v3 and Axel so low on health, but Shiro, he's the one doing it all. Esmetak's trying to come around the side. He wants to check the nod on the bombs. He's on to Axel and he'll finish off Shiro as well. And that's the pistol that Cloud9 needed to keep themselves well within reach of fighting back in this game. Excellent work by Esetag on that side position here, waiting for the right timing. Cross the placement on top. He's got everything. Four kills for him, making a huge difference. We talked about Clan 9 and we talked about their T sides mostly. This is where we praised them last week. This mm -hmm. is where Alex impressed us with his IGL abilities, right? So there is definitely a way back in. At least the first step has been done for Clan 9. Now we see Gambit not willing to let go. Full force coming in. We have the scout on Shiro. A couple of deagles, actually three deagles with arm of Axile and Afanin interns. There's even a kit on Hobby. That's a fun little plus, fun little bonus. A little bit of strawberry on top of that vanilla to have that diffuse kit in the force. Why we don't see that that often? I know it could be very important as well if we get into a, a round where it's going to be close. Alex in a good position though to catch a kill right here. Yes, he opens himself up. They now know where he is. But Alex doesn't quite hit him. And this is a five versus five. It was just pressure. It was just pressure for mm -hmm. Cloud 9. Taking a little bit of information, maybe forcing some rotate. And as we could see on the mini map, it worked. Gambit reacted to that A map session on the stairs. They've given away the A side. It's just Shiro now with Scout. It's about tagging people. It's making some damage. Ooh. Not gonna be enough. s takes him out quickly. 5v4 now. The side has fallen. Too many positions for Shiro to check there with the Scout. Cloud 9 found their way in. The grenades are going up. Aren't going to do too much damage. They just missed the mark. S-Attack ready and waiting for that. And that's smart from Gambit now. Just back away. Hold on to it. See what you can make happen in the next round. Just allow Cloud9 to have this one because you know you're far away from getting this done. Absolutely no reason to lose the investment you made. There's still a scout on Tanafany. There's still armor, Deagle. So potentially the next round is going to be the same case scenario where you have a 
somewhat decent buy going in against Cloud9. It's not a buy where you can allow yourself just to run around and farm money. If you're Cloud9, you have to be careful. You have to be ready. This tech takes down Intus. There we go. Ooh. Making it expensive for Cloud9. I'm not sure if I agree with this decision making about Cloud9 to go for this. Sure, it's nice to get a couple of DJs down. Sure, mm. it's nice to make sure that Gambit is not going to be that dangerous coming into the next round. But is it really worth it to lose two players in that situation? I don't think so. So already a little bit of a mistake made by Cloud9. And you see the smarts here now, right? The weapons were swapped around. Inters would have just had a USP. They swap all the weapons over. Shira on the scout. Galil to Axile. CZ and Deagles to play with for everyone else. Shiro went for a pop shot. But it wasn't going to connect. He'll back away. As the rest of Gambit take their positions and get themselves prepared for this. Cloud9 certainly need to be careful in a round like this because Gambit have a lot to offer. But for now, Cloud9, it's all about building this confidence. We have information being granted, but Mezzi is ready for the punish. It's just enough. It's a warning shot, though. Nafani happy to stay alive in this round, 12 HP. Is that going to be the decider for Cloud9 activating towards the A side? So far, they're taking their sweet time, and rightfully so. They have no pressure when it comes to time. A minute, more than a minute to play with. A lot of utility to clear these kind of tricky angles where the pistol is going to play. And speaking of pistol, Hobbit is quite close. Caught with Alex and the AK, and he gets the kill with the CZ. That's the key frag right here. Can he be able to pick up the AK and make more defense? So far, so good. But Cloud9, they're changing the course. Yeah, Cloud9 are back in a way. They don't want to fall into a trap here. They've been scared off for sure. Luckily, Mezzi is checking all the corners, all the angles right now. Nafani on the edge. He wants this push-up to come his way. He wants a couple of close-range deagle shots to be able to pop off. One found. But the spray comes through. They're being backed up here. It's nicely trading out. There's a big bit of damage oh. done towards the Cloud9 players for Shiro. He's unable to hit the mark. It's Comet. Oh, oh and he nearly gets it with a spray down. But s -Attack. He saves the day, headshots landed, but Cloud9, that was costly. That was way too close. We talked about how Gambit could be dangerous in that round, saving what they had the previous, and we have the result right here. Only one man staying alive. s -Attack saving, literally saving Cloud9 in that round. Hobbit did the best he could in that one versus two. We see here the cross replacement is perfect. He's ready for trade, and that could be the difference maker down the line. We're talking one bullet. One bullet more from Hobbit connecting toward s -Attack. Mm. That is... That is Cloud9, losing the round. Thank God Ooh. they didn't this time around, but Shiro finally finding some work. And that's the scary part about Gambit so far, the fact that they've been able to win and take such a big lead against Cloud9 without having their two best players oh. breaking out. Exile the timing. and Shiro, look at that. Oh, oh. This, is a, this is a near miss in just a few seconds. I'm getting very excited about near misses like that. You know, because you can see it coming in. Yeah. Like, oh, they're going to peek. And look at Nefni again. Proactive, aggressive. He almost reminds me like Art on this map right now. Here, there, and everywhere. Trying to find and walk in behind the oh. of Cloud9. And Nefni, he's going to be in a good position now. Oh, here's the shots. I see he's waiting for the second one. He's he playing knows. the long game. Does he realize he has someone in front of him? <laughs> I don't think he realized how close he was, but that's the first get on to Messi. Alex, good for the trade, not quite yet. Oh. Now he's able to make it two. That's the bomb on the ground. It's going to spook it. Maybe going for a third flop. He's too fast on the trigger, but Axel comes in as a trade. 13 to 6 for Gambit. Gambit nearly won the fourth round. One player left alive. Mm. S-Attack gets it. They come into the buy round with four alive, and they shut Cloud9 down. Great work. Super proactive oh. there from the Fanny. That was nasty from Hobby. That wall bang, we didn't quite catch it. That was uh, mm. <laughs> tasty. Mm. Mm. Tasty. Yeah, you like mm. that, huh? <laughs> God, yes, I can. I guess. <laughs> Jesus. Pistol power for Cloud9 in this round already. Grenades doing a lot of damage. They're being tagged up. They're being fragged up. But Estetag's got some of his own. He's trying to pull it out. But Hobbit with the sandbags. He's making it work. He's living the dream for now. And again, this could be the 14th round. So easily secured here. Messi just needs to do some serious damage if possible. Bit of a late play on the Molotov. And instantly Axile comes around the corner. And once again, Nefany finding the first kill in the round. He's been involved in 14 opening Ooh, duels so what? far. I thought 14. you were going to say four. Like four? No, oh no, my God. no, 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 no. Absolutely. And he's been winning the majority of those. It is absolutely fantastic what he's doing right now. As I said before, he reminds me a little bit of the way Art is playing when he's playing for Furia. Being super proactive, being super close, being super aggressive, and walking behind the lines of the enemy. He's been doing that a couple of times, both on the CT side, but also on the T side. He's playing one hell of a game right now, and once again, he wants to fight. He's not steering away from any of this. 
Can you smell what the Glocks yes. are cooking? Because yes. they're coming for you. Yes. The Glocks and for Naphany. Just tapping a little bit in the stats right here. Making it feel good. To be fair, he kind of deserves it. He's been the uh, man of the hour when it comes to gun rounds by far. So let him have it. Let him have some fun. Axel with chime in, winning the duel versus Messi. And what's really striking me about this Gambit team so far is how cleanly they have won the round. It oh, was yeah. never really about clutches. We've had a couple of 1v1s here and there, but overall, the round they won, they did it in such a clean fashion. No questions asked. I mean, right now, it's just about stats batting. Axel's gonna have time of his life right here until Wokstick answers back with the Glock. Probably gonna be the only kid he can get. And we have 15 to 6 Gambit, one round away from taking down Klein 9 on Vertigo. Yeah, and I don't think any of us would have expected this scoreline to be the case, James right? Would. James would, of course, <laughs> James would expect him to win 60. I predicted it. You know, my CS boys out here, CIS uh, all the but, way. But if you're honest, right, no, no. You probably, probably wouldn't expect it a 16-6. I think it's been very impressive for Gambit. Of course, they have to close out the game now. It's not just over yet for Cloud9. They're required to win nine rounds in a row if they want to get back into OT. They can't even win the game by now. They only push it into OT, and I'm not seeing that happen anytime soon. No, from what we've seen from Cloud9 thus far, it's just not been enough. Gambit are by far the better team when it comes to Vertigo. They're hitting their shots and they're hitting the mark. And just the difference in team play and synergy is huge here. You can see Gambit pretty much just going through the motions of the rounds here, making a lot of difference with the utility. A lot of Cloud9 players stopping up, spraying through the smoke. That's always a dangerous game if you're going to empty your whole magazine. Floppy found interns so far away, but the trade comes in for Hobbit. We talked about the trading potential for Gambit, and once again, there is an instant answer coming on the round. Four versus four. Granite should be advantage T side, but Axe side might surprise everyone with that ledge position. Oh, GKP, good. He has to give up the position. Axe wants to challenge some more, though. He throws the nade out, expects someone to be down there. Mezzi walks straight Ooh. into it. He's just giving him the opportunity. And now, once again, Gambit with the numbers in their favor. Woxic having a terrible game and he's about to deal with Nafani. The flash comes in and Woxic goes down. Perfect. Gambit in a 4v2 to close this out 16-6. Alex has done everything possible alongside Estatec to try and fight back against the Gambit boys. But it has not been enough. And Axar, little does he know, Alex is behind him. Oh, oh he's made some noise now. This might give him a chance. He gets spotted. It would allow him to get a plant down. Certainly possible. Alex is an experienced, capable player. He's got time, but he has nothing else to play with. That's going to be three quick kills or nothing because everyone from Gambit is coming from the same position. He's going to jump on down. Fanny goes down first, but Hobbit easily makes quick work of Alex. 16-6, and Gambit take their map pick. Vertigo was impressive from start to finish, and Cloud9, well, they don't have the answers. Teams, we've just spent an entire week covering some of the best teams in the world playing Counter-Strike, some of the greatest players yeah. out there. And I gotta say, this is some of the most impressive Counter-Strike I've seen in the last week. Everything was on point for Gambit right here. Everything they did was together. Everything they did on the server seemed to be planned out, and they had the individual skill to pull it off as well. Certainly. We talked about Shiro, Exile coming into the game. They weren't even the two guys we had to look out for. It was fantastic by Gambit. Right here. It was fantastic from Gambit, and this just gets me.